What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Grand Force Gaming. Nova here, and as always, we have Datscat with us. Datscat, what's going on? How are we all doing, fighters? We wanted to make this video today, not because of this particular time, like like this date, you know, but because of the, the position that the game is in right now. And we wanted to ask the question to you guys, like, are you planning for what's next? And that's because we're in the off season right now in this game. This happens quite often. We see big events come around. We see uh, like Effigy, HWA, we see events for new fighters come and those are always packed with tons of things to do where you finally get to use these fighters that you have for different purposes and see how they like match up against other people. And now what you need to be asking yourself is, what am I doing to prepare for this this next round of events, right? Scott, I, I think this is just like one of the most important things that we need to think about in this game. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people kind of take a break. You know, they, they yeah. get a little fatigued and uh, end up taking a little break, you know, just getting their dailies done and putting the game down. Right. But I think right now is a, is a really key time, uh, these off seasons uh, I'm referring to, um, for kind of planning, you know, uh, just because we have all these tier lists doesn't mean that uh, the next fighter on the tier list is the fighter you should be building. Right. You know, you need to be building the fighter that completes a team for you or gives you a new opportunity. And uh, most exciting, at least in my opinion, is when a new fighter gets released into the game and I get to break up one of my main teams and yeah. then I have options. That and is so huge. It, it, it really is. So, Here's a good example. Um, let's say somebody was going for Sagat, but didn't really have a good team or, or a plan to put him, or maybe they haven't built Trendy Cami yet, or whatever. Right. Maybe Summer Ibuki is a better fit because then you can take B Sangeef out of your C Viper lineup mm -hmm. and then free B, B Sangeef up to maybe pair with Guile. I wouldn't be sure. doing Kyle for, Guile for PvP, but I'm just saying, it's you know, doable. there are I mean... options. With a in fighter showdown. like BZ. Sure. Yeah, I mean, in, it's, in it, he's certainly usable in Showdown, but yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Scott. I think this is the time for, for you to really be like kind of rethinking what you're working on. And that's mm -hmm. like part of planning for what's next. Like what were you lacking during the last event? Who were you seeing people use that was just like totally ruining what you had going on? Why was your, in this last uh, fighter event, why was your fourth team so weak? Yes. This is where it, we need to be making these plans so that we can continue to compete with the whales that play this game, basically. Yeah, and even in our Discord, uh, just today, we were having conversations about certain fighters that aren't top tier, right? but are on, right on that second tier. Fighters like uh, Blanca Original and Poison sure. Original. like. Because there's four teams needed now for some of these boss fights, all of a sudden, these secondary tier characters, they're going to have their day in the sun. And yeah. somebody like somebody like Blanca has a lot of utility with a, these random interrupts that he can throw into the mix. Like sure. It really kind of screws up your plan uh, when all of a sudden you get interrupted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, he could do very no well reason. in HWA. I think so, but... Like, with the, the passive the interrupts, point... I mean, you can't interrupt a boss, right? But for no. PvP, like... If we have more teams, like maybe this next HWA will be four teams. We don't know. We don't and, know. And however, though, with the addition of having four teams in a previous event, we know that that might be a, a trajectory the game is going sure. in. So, so we just need to be prepared and uh, building the proper teams that we have. So right. think about your current teams. Think about what you want to do. And most importantly, as you progress in the game, you know, maybe you're um, chapter 35 or 30, so somewhere kind of into getting into late game. Start thinking about um, who you need for these boss fights. Right. Because, like, it, the game kind of progresses. Once once you uh, get far enough in the campaign, then your daily rewards are good enough. The game kind of goes into autopilot, and you get a you basically get to round out squads that you wouldn't normally round out for PvE. Meaning Correct. PvP squads and boss fight squads. Correct. So, so you're and some of these some of these fighters can do both really well. Like Sea Viper, you can put her anywhere and she's gonna perform. Oh like, yeah, I mean she's. It doesn't of, even matter. She's one of the maybe like the top priority fighter in the game because she's normal faction. She has soul power. I'm still yeah. I'm close to a hundred now, but 
her vehicles. I mean, this is where my, my focus has been like trying to get her vehicle to. So I've got all three on the left side fully leveled now. So that's plus 10% here, plus 10%, plus 10%. It it's, it's wild how much damage she's doing. It's, it's seriously a focus that people need to be making. And this was a, a conversation somebody was having today in our discord was, should I build C Viper? This is the this is the kind of planning that we need to be we need to be doing these conversations with other people that play the yep. game. If you're not in our Discord, you should join us. You can have these conversations with us in real time. One hundred percent. This is how you guys can plan to to do better and perform better because the best rewards are coming from events. They're coming from the super showdown here. If you look at the rewards, just for getting into some of the placements, um, I was not going to show it here because it's not going to show prior to the actual final showdown winning. But you can get special summon tickets from it. Which is which is key. Anywhere that we can get these special summon tickets for free is what we have to do. And yeah. if you guys don't know this too, when you're looking at certain leaderboards for different events like Effigy Clash, uh, the boss mm -hmm. fights in the events, you can look at the leaderboards and you can look at who everyone else is using. Yep. So what I don't want you guys to do when the next event comes around is look at the top people like you know the biggest whale with the highest score because they're going to be using a lot of divination and special summon fighters that you don't have. But what you can do is you can, you can scroll down a little bit, find some people that are not scoring, you know, ridiculously high, you know, like myself, for example, you can look at mine here. I'm using two legendary fighters and I'm using two special summon fighters and that's it. And like and getting really good scores and getting really good scores. And, you can sub out Nero for E Honda, and you can sub out Flame Chun Li for Fashion Blanca. You can move him up from my team three, and you can put mm -hmm. somebody else in my team three. These aren't like these aren't crazy teams right here. This is doable for for anyone. I made one strong special summon push that was planned out. I waited for it. It was for Oni, and then I've just slowly been working on Summer Elena. Yeah, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The the most value you're going to get out of anything is what you need now. It's not yeah. necessarily what anybody else is saying, but we like, like uh, Nova was saying in our discord, we were having conversations today about uh, should I build summer Ibuki or prep summer Ibuki to be really, really good over C Viper. And I think the answer is no, you should, you should really focus C Viper. She's going to offer more utility for you. You're also um, going to be able to build her faster because she's normal faction. Easier right. to get. Yep. Yep. Um, I think they were specifically referring to the vehicles, but... Um, okay. Sure. It, regardless, um, you, there are certain fighters that you need before you're thinking about doing anything else, like Bison, yeah. like Sea Viper, yep. like b Sangeev, like yep. Guile. You know, if you get these fighters all up, you're going to be able to do multiple different game modes within the game and get maximum rewards for your time spent playing. Right. Isn't that the goal? I mean, it is. <laughs> like, and something bet. I've noticed as well is that in these off seasons, they tend to release fighters as well, but they're just kind of, you know, there's not like a big event around. You get like a trial for it or whatever. Standardly, they're not that impressive. So just make sure in the off season, you're not getting distracted by the new shiny thing because it doesn't just because it's a new fighter doesn't mean that it's good. Right, Pharaoh Sagat's not doing anything good for anyone right now, to my knowledge. I don't think that we have the team built for him yet, or at least it hasn't been figured out yet. He will likely be good in the future, but you don't need to draw for him because there's not really a clear use for him at this point in time. You need to make sure you're working on things that have a use case. So as an example, I have been working on Fire Adon, and the reason for that is because there's a very strong use case. He can be supplemented for Dalsim, which means you can free up Dalsim to be on another team now which means the whole like uh, OG use of Fashion Blanca and Dalsim can be my fourth team now, and I can put Fire It On with my Flame Chun-Li. So these are, yeah. these are, this is like the planning we're talking about, right? Like who can you, how can you move people around? Yep. Teams are going yep. to evolve and you need to try and keep up with it. Like, I got a lot of work to do on Fire It On. He's only S. It's, I haven't been doing anything special to get copies of him. This has just been luck of the draw for me, but I've got some work to do, but that that's my project before the next event comes. I want him at least SS with yeah. FS plus 30. And I, I did the, the crazy grind of getting my Oni to plus 40. But I saved Gosh. tickets to summon for 
for months, like months. So I wasn't going to just like leave him unmaxed. I still have some stars to go, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you guys get my point. Like the, this is, this is part of the, part of the whole plan for this game here and how you can find yourself doing better and performing better and therefore getting better rewards. Keep your eye out for the fighters that are going to help expand your lineup. Yeah. Not like it, like take your top three teams for PVP or PVE or, or boss fights. Mm -hmm. Take those top three teams and make a fourth. Right. That's, that's kind of the idea. And, and, you know, likely you're going to have a sea viper, B Sangeef, you know, team, right? Everybody does for PVP. Everybody needs that team. Yep. Um, however, you, so in the off season, you slowly build some Rabuki, and then the next time we have a PVP based event, you're all of a sudden throwing up bigger numbers than you were. See, this is the improvement. Right. And so that's kind of what, uh, we here at Grand Forest Gaming are kind of, we we don't push anybody to do anything, but uh, uh, suggesting here that the yeah. off season it it can be a time where you're strategizing and planning instead of um, sure. just getting those dailies done. So yep. uh, just because the game isn't offering you things to push with your thumbs doesn't mean the game isn't offering you options. Right. It's all this is all like preparation for for the next event, so that when it comes time to push your thumbs against your screen again, or click your mouse really fast you have what you need to do better than the previous time, right? Yep. Um, there was something I wanted to add from what you just said. Oh, it's not always about just trying to put up bigger numbers. Sometimes it's about recognizing what you didn't do well against. So mm-hmm. in the last HWA, and we mentioned this a couple of times, I do want to touch on it again. The Viper counter team. Yeah. E-Honda, Zangief, regular Zangief, Bison, and Summer Elena. And Summer Elena can just be an A grade or an A plus grade. She doesn't have to be just, you just want the trigger healing from her. That team, because Bison sits in the third position, in the anchor position, he's taking all of the hits from the Viper teams and therefore nothing's happening. It's a very hard counter that we saw come up in the last HWA that we're Mm -hmm. still seeing pop up in like showdown sometimes. So if you don't have these divination fighters to work on right now, I can tell you right now, you are already going to perform better in the next HWA if you have that team built. Yep. Get one copy of Summer Elena, get E Honda built, get his soul power going, work on Zangief and work on Bison because you're going to have those first two, regardless of your stage in the game, they come they come to you very easily. And Bison is 100% the first divination fighter that you should be going for anyway. So you better have him at this point in time. Yep. These are things that you can do to just help yourself improve to some degree. So... Yeah, make sure you're not wasting the off season just thinking I'll do my dailies and, and call it a day. Albeit a tempting proposition from time to time. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I play this game every day to the degree that I play it. It varies depending on how interested I am at, the, at this point in time. But we've been playing this since day one, and it's easy in the off season to just be like, ah, eh, I'm not going to try and progress in the story. I'm not going to worry about doing anything in like the towers. Yep. Yep. I'm just going to get my dailies slowly build up the resources I need to summon for vehicles and get my boost stones and, and close the game out. But there's a lot that you can do in game to get rewards, the more that you progress and that can help you do better. So any stats you can get now, you just got to go for it. You got to do it. Yeah. So anything else you want to add scat before we close this out? Uh, I think that about wraps it up for this, for this video. Uh, again, I want to, I guess one thing. Yes. I guess one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, our Discord is a really great place yes. to keep your morale up during these off seasons. Sometimes these off seasons, you might go two days without opening the game. Well, sure. that third day, it's even harder to open the game, and that fourth <laughs> day is even harder than that. So, yeah, um, our our Discord is a great place to just start bouncing ideas off of people and keep yourself fresh. Yep. Um, and, and ready to about play. Team compositions, who they're building. It's a very positive, very helpful space for this game. It's no negativity. It's just a good place to hang out and chat about Street Fighter Duel. So so check it out. Yeah, definitely join it. We have the link here in the description for you. And then we also have it in our bio. It's called Grind Force Gaming. Hopefully we'll see you guys there. And uh, we'll close it on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment on the video as well. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Later.